the sacrifices without thinking. That's the ministry of motherhood. And that's what makes mothers distinct. And that's the love that speaks of God's love. By nature, it sacrifices. That is the nature of love. In the House of Representatives under new management, the Equality Act was approved to go forward for a vote. One of Nancy Pelosi's sworn aim is to pass this act. The Equality Act may sound innocuous, but it has been described as the most invasive threat to religious liberty ever proposed in America. If it is to pass, if it passes, and this is what is written here about it, its sweeping effect on religious liberty, free speech, and freedom of conscience would be historic. It basically will enshrine into federal law the erasing of all distinction of gender. It will elevate sexual orientation or LGBT causes over and against religious liberty and biblical faith. In fact, it specifically stipulates that the Religious Freedom Restoration Act cannot be appealed to anymore by businesses, educational institutions, religious institutions, and individuals. Those who follow the Bible and thus who cannot agree with such things as the, distinct, as the erasing of gender, same-sex marriage will be equated with racists and bigots and will lose every legal fight they enter. In public schools, parents will be forced to have their children educated against the Bible or against their faith. The, quote, war over bathrooms will be over. In the United States, a recent study found that 40% of those in prison, actually United Kingdom, 40% of those in prison identifying as transgender are registered sex offenders. This is saying now that one of any sex will have the right to go anywhere one wants, such as men entering Women's bathrooms, women's showers, competing in women's sports, which is lunacy. Any religious organization working to provide homes for orphans or foster children will be cut off from government support if they do not agree with these things. All doctors will be forced to immediately start transitioning any child who says they are, really want to be the other sex. The war of wedding cakes over, wedding photographers over, all others along these lines, all things will be over. Believers will be forced to endorse homosexuality and, and same-sex marriage or, or go against their conscience or go out of business wherever it affects that. Parents will lose their rights not only at school but at home. If a child says, I want to be of the opposite sex, that parent, if they do not start biologically or medically trying to change that child, they will run the risk of having their children taken away from them. That is not just talk. It's already happened. A father and mother said they wanted to provide counseling for their child who wanted to be of the opposite sex. The state removed the child from their parents. This year a public school in Australia stopped celebrating Mother's Day. They renamed it Appreciation Day. Apparently the word mother is too offensive now. The principal of the school stated, we no longer subscribe to a binary world. Binary, too. We no longer subscribe. I never knew that living in this world you need a subscription. <laughs> we no longer subscribe to a binary world. Well, it's a good thing that your parents did. Or you wouldn't exist to make statements that made no sense. You know, our streets operate one way goes this way, one way goes that way. We have a binary system of traffic. It's like saying we no longer subscribe to binary traffic. And we're going to teach our children to drive in a non-binary road system. The problem is our roads operate that way. You do that, you're going to end up crashing into binary reality. And so with this, God created human life, male and female. It doesn't matter if you subscribe to it any more than it matters if you subscribe to the law of gravity. If you go against it, you're going to crash. And that is the lunacy that the culture has descended to now. And people like sheep, just going with whatever is the newest thing, just getting on board, doesn't matter what it is. What does this have to do with motherhood? Everything. See, the culture warring against God wars against the creation. Thus it wars against gender because it's created. 
If you wage a war against gender, you're going to wage a war against motherhood, fatherhood, marriage, family. Because motherhood requires gender. And that gender requires a distinction. And that distinction is linked to different purposes. Mothers are distinct and the ministry of motherhood is distinct. And in their distinctiveness, mothers express one of the aspects of God, of God's love. There's always exceptions, of course, but in general, mothers by nature tend to be more empathetic to their children, sympathetic, compassionate with their children. There are exceptions. There are mothers who are less so, and there are fathers, some fathers who may be more so, but that's the general way. That's the way it is. My son, Diel, I mean, here's an exception. My son, Diel, recently touched my heart. I had taken him shopping with me for food in the supermarket. He said, Dad, I love being with you. I never want this to end. And later he said, he's telling me he got a certain pack of cookies. He said, because I want to get, it's the same cookies that you got me when we were in the supermarket. I wanted to get it to bring back the memory. Fathers, of course, feel compassion if they're good fathers. Uh, the good father is, will be compassionate, but overall it comes more instinctively and more naturally to mothers more strongly. With the birth of our second son, Diel, it was a difficult pregnancy. Painful. It was a long recovery. My wife, Renata, said, never again. Never. It's over. No more production. That's it. That lasted a few years. Then came the first sign of trouble. She said, well, maybe, do you think, maybe we should be open to another child. A little while later, she said, let's have another one. So we got a dog. I thought that would do it. It worked for a while, but it didn't work. So we had our third baby. It's been a blessing. Our son, Mishael. When I, when I look at what Renata had to go through physically, the pregnancy, the operation, the pain, the recovery, and then what she puts into the care of Mishael, the lack of sleep, the getting up at all hours, the sacrifices without thinking, that's the ministry of motherhood. And that's what makes mothers distinct. And that's the love that speaks of God's love. By nature, it sacrifices. That is the nature of love. God is love, but if God is love, love sacrifices. So there must be a sacrifice to God, and we have the one faith that has it. Our faith is centered on the love of God, centered on the sacrifice of God. And But we see a shadow of that in motherhood. Sacrificial love, unconditional love, radical love. And we celebrate that. We give thanks for motherhood. This is Jonathan Kahn. Thanks for watching. The Josiah Manifesto and all my books you can get anywhere. Amazon, wherever books are sold. Shalom.